because as I said, we've never had this before happen. Everything was smooth sailing. So anyways, without further ado, we have Dr. Marco Licolti here, who is going to, from Italy. Um, thank you, Marco, for being here. And he's going to be talking about the, um, improving the aroma of your Cabernet Sauvignon with a focus on beta damascenone and pyrazine. So, Marco, please take it away. Thanks again. <laughs> okay. Well, first of all, thank you very much, uh, Andrea, for uh, your invitation. Uh, it's a pleasure for me uh, to uh, present uh, my uh, webinar today. Um, and thank you, everybody who is attending. And uh, so I'm going to start my presentation. And uh, next slide. Sorry, now I am having some. Okay. <laughs> okay, the objective of this, uh, you still hearing me? I do, yes. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, I, I can hear you, Marco. Yes. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, so the objective of the, the, uh, the uh, this webinar is uh, presenting the results on the uh, piercing contact uh, and the veget vegetal profile of uh, Cab Cabernet Sauvignon harvested at different stages of maturation. This is called the Hang Time Project uh, that I conducted uh, uh, between uh, 2007 and 2009 when I was at uh, UC Davis. And uh, then the second part of my presentation is going to focus on a um, molecule called Atodamacenon uh, that has an impact on the aroma profile uh, of the uh, Cabernet Sauvignon wines, and uh, we'll see uh, what the impact uh, is. So this is the outline of my presentation. Uh, I'm going to start with the uh, introduction, <clears throat> introducing the uh, uh, main molecule, the uh, pyrazine molecule IBMP, isobutyl methoxypyrazine, that I'm going to uh, talk about and uh, focus on. And uh, I'm going to outline uh, the uh, hang time project. I'm going to then uh, present the results of the hang time, hang time project. Uh, in the second part of my, uh, this webinar, is going to uh, focus on the uh, biogenesis of the uh, beta damascenone and uh, its role, as, uh, as you're going to see, as the fruity aroma enhancer. And then uh, the interesting part is going to be how can we uh, um, increase the concentration of beta damascenon, uh, starting from the vineyard uh, with the uh, uh, vineyard uh, operations uh, uh, the, uh, throughout the uh, uh, winemaking process. So, pyrazines, um, the IBMP, you see the uh, structure of the molecule here, isobutyl methoxypyrazine. Uh, was identified for the first time back in 1969 uh, in uh, bell pepper. And um, the uh, um, sensory profile, uh, the sensory aroma associated uh, with the, this molecule is very, uh, it is a very vegetal uh, aroma um, that reminds you of uh, uh, green pepper. Uh, in this uh, study uh, published in 1991, the, uh, uh, after the uh, um, identification of uh, uh, isobutyl methoxypyrazine in wine, uh, uh, the, the correlation with, uh, with the uh, vegetative aroma of this molecule was studied. And as you can see, if you increase uh, the uh, concentration of the uh, IBMP, in short, isobutyl methoxypyrazine, you see that the uh, vegetative aroma intensity is uh, increasing. So there's a direct correlation between the uh, concentration of ice, uh, the uh, pyrazine and the uh, vegetative scores. Uh, now thresholds, okay, the sensory threshold. So, you know, by uh, just uh, uh, simply the sensory threshold is the concentration by which uh, uh, the uh, um, we can perceive uh, the aroma of the uh, molecule. So uh, here I reported in this slide uh, two uh, thresholds uh, identified. The first one, uh, two PPT, 
uh, was identified in a model wine, so it was not a real wine. The second one at 15 PPT was identified in a real wine. And uh, just to give you an idea of uh, PPT part per trillions, when we talk about part per trillions, uh, so we're down to down to the uh, like a few PPT. Uh, you have to imagine that uh, we um, spike a few drops in a swimming pool, and so this will tell you uh, the uh, intensity, uh, how strong uh, this uh, molecule can be, and also it tells you about uh, how powerful. Uh, can be our nose, we can smell a few drops in a, in a swimming pool. A DMP uh, mm, is, has been shown in this uh, uh, study uh, published in, on the uh, Journal of Agricultural and Food Chemistry in 2008 uh, that you can see here, this is the uh, the raison, so it is the time where, when, uh, the uh, grapes, they start changing color, okay? So you see that the peak of the pyrazines is uh, uh, before uh, the raisin, and then it starts decreasing. Um, in this study, they, <clears throat> they studied, uh, in this article, they studied the uh, uh, concentration of IBNP in the uh, shaded, you know, the uh, black dots here, and uh, the exposed berries, so you see that if uh, we expose the berries uh, during the growing season, um, we can uh, decrease uh, the concentration of pyrazines, okay? So this is an important uh, uh, information if uh, we want to minimize uh, the uh, veggie aromas in our wines. Now, the hang time project uh, Started in uh, 2006 uh, at uh, UC Davis. Uh, I joined in uh, and uh, participated in the uh, last two years, uh, so 2007, 2008. Uh, and uh, <coughs> the um, objective of, of the study was to assess the optimum time for harvest of Cabs uh, Sauvignon grapes uh, from the, uh, was conducted in uh, the uh, central coast of California. And uh, upon, uh, based upon the evolution profile of the uh, volatile compounds, and uh, here I'm going to just uh, focus my attention on the pyrazines, um, and also the uh, tannins was, were monitored as well as the uh, anthocyanins during uh, maturation of the grapes. So for the uh, three vintages, 2006, 2007, and 2008. Uh, uh, we did uh, six harvests uh, between 20 and 30 bricks. Then uh, we did uh, the uh, vinifications. So we did uh, six harvests per vintage, and we used the uh, standard vinification protocol. Now, just uh, to uh, give you an idea about the uh, chemical analysis that uh, we uh, performed uh, from grapes and wines was uh, basic chemistry, so sugar, pH, uh, uh, tratable acidity, and also the uh, by using the Adams assay, uh, we um, analyzed the uh, polyphenols. And uh, by GCMS, which is a um, uh, mass chromatography, uh, it is a uh, method that is used to uh, analyze the uh, volatile compounds, the aroma compounds. Uh, we did the um, uh, GCMS on the uh, grapes and also on the uh, wines. And today, as I said, uh, we're going to just focus on the uh, methoxypyrazines. So uh, when I say uh, IBMP or isobutyl methoxypyrazine or methoxypyrazines, it is um, using pretty much synonyms, even though in this family of the uh, pyrazines, uh, it exists also the IPNP, uh, isopropyl methoxypyrazine. Uh, which uh, is uh, more related to uh, like a potato cooked uh, potato aroma. But, uh, today we just uh, uh, we're gonna just I'm gonna just present uh, data uh, on uh, pyrazines uh, uh, related to the uh, bell pepper and the uh, vegetal aromas. Um, 
We did a sensory analysis, and you see a couple of pictures. You see uh, me uh, a few years ago. Uh, <laughs> I was a little younger, back in 2007. So we did a descriptive analysis, which is a technique, uh, uh, sensory uh, or sensory analysis technique right, that uses a uh, panel. Uh, and uh, we did the uh, descriptive analysis on both uh, grapes and the uh, finished uh, wines. So this will give you an idea, the uh, breaks at harvest, uh, as I said, uh, the goal was uh, to uh, pick the grapes between 20 and 30. So the uh, goals were uh, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, and 30 weeks, and see uh, here the uh, real breaks uh, at harvest for the three uh, uh, vintages. And uh, in this slide, you see the descriptors that were used for the sensory evaluation of the uh, grapes. And uh, as you can see, uh, we used as the uh, definition the intensity of the uh, vegetal flavor. So as we're going to see uh, later on in this presentation, uh, when, I when I talk about uh, uh, veginess, uh, that includes the uh, piercings, but not only the piercings, that, as we're going to see uh, in the next slide also. Uh, so this is for the grapes. In the next, next slide, uh, you see that uh, the uh, vaginess also uh, here, uh, it is, includes also not only the uh, green pepper, but also the uh, grass uh, and like uh, overall vegetal aroma. Okay, So a standard, this is a standard that we used uh, during the, um, the uh, sensory uh, analysis. So a standard is uh, basically I used to uh, go uh, and get some uh, grass clippings and then uh, uh, using a slice of uh, uh, green pepper and soak it in wine. Uh, this was the standard that we developed uh, that was reproducing what the uh, panelists uh, were um, uh, smelling uh, during the um, sessions of the uh, sensory evaluation. Now, let's get into the uh, results. So this is like briefly for the uh, um, three uh, vintages, 2006, 2008, uh, through 2008, uh, the uh, sugar accumulation. And uh, you see that uh, uh, the last part of the last vintages uh, especially the uh, 30 bricks, uh, starting sometimes uh, 28 bricks, uh, we have an increase uh, in concentration. And this is uh, due to uh, dehydration because uh, uh, for ripeness, uh, ripening, usually you uh, uh, you reach a plateau and then it's just by, if you let it hang uh, on the vine, uh, the uh, grapes uh, dehydrate uh, and they get concentrated more in sugar. <laughs> Um, this is the uh, result for the uh, fruit, okay? So we're not in the wines yet. So you see here the uh, ISO IBNP, so the uh, piercings, the, uh, uh, the pepper aroma, and this is the chemistry, okay? So as I said, we did uh, GCMS, so gas chromatography, on the uh, grapes, uh, and we uh, monitor we uh, analyzed all the samples throughout uh, ripening. And uh, in the uh, next, uh, in the uh, uh, right uh, graph, uh, you see the sensory, and this is the average intensity rating for vaginess, okay? It's not just uh, uh, bell pepper, but it is like vegetal aromas, okay? You remember that in the uh, standard that we used, uh, it was not only a slice of uh, uh, green pepper, but also some uh, uh, grass uh, clippings, okay? So it is interesting to see that uh, um, consistent with the uh, publication that uh, uh, I showed uh, before that shows that there's a peak before the raison, and then after the raison, the concentration of piercings goes down, okay? And uh, we can Take, if we take a look here, we see that, uh, let's say, around 25, 25.5 uh, uh, bricks, uh, we reach the minimum uh, 
concentration of the pyrazines in the grapes. Okay. In the next slide, we see the wines. And so here, um, in this slide, we see, um, sorry, in this graph uh, on the left, uh, we see the chemistry of the uh, IBMP. And here again, uh, we see that there is a decrease uh, in pyrazine during uh, um, uh, ripening, except for the year 2007, it was a very particular climate, uh, was quite warm. Uh, and so probably the peak uh, in 2007 uh, happened uh, before. And then uh, by 20, uh, bricks uh, were pretty much, you know, quite low, except this, uh, that probably there was in this uh, data point, there was a problem with the analysis, but uh, you see, uh, we're quite low in 2007. For the sensory, <coughs> we see that uh, there is a decrease of the uh, vaginess, okay, um, and uh, consistently uh, with the uh, uh, chemistry of the IBMP, also the sensory, you see that uh, it is quite flat here. We have uh, probably by harvest two, which was like uh, 20, around 22, 23 bricks, uh, will reach uh, the minimum uh, intensity of the uh, uh, veginess, the vegetal flavor. Uh, if we take a look at the uh, bricks and the, uh, we plot the increasing bricks uh, versus the uh, vaginess, we see that there is a decrease, okay? And uh, in 2007, consistently with the other, uh, the other vintages, we see that there is a decrease. Uh, and, uh, and this is for the wine, pretty much the same for the wine. Uh, uh, throughout the maturation of the grapes, uh, uh, we have a decrease uh, in, um, in uh, uh, vaginess. <clears throat> and, oops, sorry. Uh, decrease in vaginess in uh, uh, 2007, it is quite consistently with the uh, previous results. Now, I'm going to show you also the uh, results that uh, we had uh, on the uh, as the uh, validation of the uh, dairy sensory analysis, uh, which is a method that is used uh, to uh, predict uh, uh, the uh, vaginess in this case, but also to monitor the uh, ripeness uh, throughout uh, maturation. It is a, a, a method that is been uh, increasingly used uh, in the last uh, 10 or uh, 15 years. And, uh, uh, the majority probably of the uh, um, wineries now, they use this method because it is a good prediction of the uh, ripeness. And uh, if you use it carefully uh, year over the years, you can uh, um, predict uh, uh, with the uh, good, uh, um, it's a good prediction for the uh, 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 moment, the uh, exact moment where you want to pick uh, your grapes, okay, based on the uh, uh, based on the style of wine that you want to do. So as you can see here, if we uh, plot uh, the average intensity uh, ratings of vaginess uh, uh, versus the uh, <clears throat> of the grapes uh, versus the average intensity ratings of the wines. Uh, this is a correlation. So now I'm going to spend uh, just a few uh, couple of a few slides uh, uh, presenting the uh, method, the uh, BSA, the Barry Sensory Analysis Method. So it is based on uh, the uh, so sequential uh, evaluation, uh, visual and uh, also tactile, and but also um, uh, by mouth of the uh, ripeness of the uh, of the uh, berries, okay? <clears throat> so first, uh, you do the visual and tactile evaluation. So you look at the uh, skin color, and also uh, you take the um, uh, berry in between uh, fingers and you uh, check the firmness of the, uh, of the uh, berry. And also, how easy you can remove the uh, stalk. And the uh, second step is the uh, uh, tasting of the pulp. And then uh, you're going to 
evaluate the uh, sweetness, sweetness, the acidity, uh, and some aromas also that uh, can be present in the uh, pulp and the adherence uh, to of the pulp uh, to the skin. So how easy you can squeeze the pulp, uh, separate the uh, pulp from skin. And then uh, also you, you taste the uh, skin. So first uh, you crush it, you chew on the skin, uh, and you evaluate for crushability, um, acidity, and also now it is very important to uh, um, evaluate uh, the intensity of the uh, astringency, so the uh, tannins, and for some uh, uh, aromas that can be present in the, uh, in the skin. And the last evaluation is the, on the uh, seeds. Not only you evaluate uh, the color, if you look at the color of the seeds uh, uh, early uh, in the season when the uh, uh, grapes are not uh, ripe, the seeds are totally green. And then uh, uh, throughout um, uh, grape maturation, they turn uh, brown. Okay. And then also you uh, chew and you put them in the uh, mouth and you chew on them uh, and you evaluate for astringency and also for aromas like uh, nuttiness, uh, etc. You can also use some score sheets. This is the uh, one score sheet uh, that I used to use when I was at the uh, uh, University of Missouri. Uh, we used this uh, in uh, one uh, seminar that was, uh, was an extension seminar that uh, was organized for the uh, wine industry. And see here this score sheet, well, we, uh, you have some information that you have to fill in, uh, so the grape variety, what is the sample, where, where does it come from, uh, and also your evaluation on crushability, color of the skin, uh, and all the uh, uh, parameters that I uh, presented uh, uh, in the uh, slide before. <coughs> so if you uh, do the uh, berry sensory analysis, uh, as I said before, it is a very powerful tool that you can use uh, in order to monitor uh, ripeness. And then over the years, uh, you, if you accumulate all the information, uh, it is extremely important. Uh, and uh, eventually you can uh, easily predict uh, the uh, best time to harvest your grapes uh, based uh, <coughs> based on the uh, data that they uh, collected. So in this uh, slide, uh, you see the um, um, data from the aroma compounds by using the, uh, as I said before, the uh, GCMS. Uh, in this slide, uh, you see the um, uh, different families of aroma compounds that are that developed during uh, um, during ripeness. Uh, see here, you have a H uh, stands for harvest, H2, H3, H4, H5, and H6. Uh, and you see all the uh, uh, the peaks of all the um, families of the aroma compounds uh, appearing uh, during uh, uh, ripeness or maturation of the grapes. <clears throat> But today we're going to focus on the, uh, sorry, on the uh, nor isoprenoids because uh, later on this uh, in this webinar, uh, because um, I mentioned um, methadamacinone, this uh, interesting molecule uh, that belongs to the, well, the, the, the to the family of the uh, C13 nor isoprenoids. So if you look at the uh, aromas that are associated with these families, uh, you see that in, in the first harvests, two and three, uh, you have uh, the alcohols and aldehydes uh, at uh, six uh, carbon atoms and that are associated with uh, very uh, vegetal flavors, okay, like uh, fresh veggie, grass, etc. cetera. Then uh, going like to, toward a more, uh, the ripe uh, fruit uh, in the uh, corresponding wines, uh, we have uh, the peak of norazoprenoids that are associated with uh, flavors like uh, fruity, honey, and also like some uh, 
there's one compound that I'm going to talk briefly uh, later, uh, which smells like a violet. Then uh, after harvest four, we have the uh, terpenes, um, and also that are associated with flavors like floral and citrus. And then uh, past uh, harvest four, harvest five, or harvest six, uh, we go through like uh, kind of weird uh, um, aromas like uh, associated with uh, metallic uh, mushroom uh, and some other um, probably not very desirable aromas. So con in conclusion, by harvest uh, number three, which uh, corresponds around 24, 24.5 weeks, uh, in all the three years, the uh, pyrazine's concentration in the grapes uh, had uh, uh, pretty much reached uh, uh, the uh, lowest level. Okay? Then uh, all the uh, pyrazine's level in whites from the three vintages, so this is very interesting information, <coughs> uh, were below the uh, sensory threshold that was uh, determined by uh, uh, this uh, French uh, researcher, which is uh, 15 uh, uh, PPT, um, part of trillions. And uh, also the pyrazines, they seem not to play the major role in the overall vegetal aroma of uh, Central Coast Cabernet Sauvignon wines if uh, you harvest them past the 24 or 25 bricks. Okay. And the uh, last uh, piece of information is that BSA, and I would encourage you to uh, uh, apply this method because it is definitely a valuable method for prediction of uh, vegetal character, but also to uh, predict uh, the uh, uh, ideal uh, time for harvest based on the uh, style of wine that uh, you want to wanna make. <clears throat> now we're getting to the uh, second part of the uh, presentation, which is uh, focusing on the uh, uh, beta damascenon, and uh, so we're going to see the biogenesis of the uh, beta damascenon and uh, its impact on the uh, aroma profile uh, of the uh, wines. But uh, in this case, uh, we're talking about the Cabernet uh, Sauvignon wines uh, and how we can uh, maximize it, uh, its concentration from the vineyard uh, to the uh, bottle. So summary, I'm going to talk about, I'm going to present the uh, norazoprenoids. Uh, they come from carotenoids, uh, as we're going to see. Uh, briefly, not, I'm not going to go into the uh, details, but we're going to see the uh, biosynthesis of the uh, main C13 norazoprenoids uh, with a focus on the uh, uh, beta-damasinone and the, the uh, sensory impact of the uh, beta-damasinone. So um, beta damascenone and the uh, C13 uh, norazoprenoids, which is the uh, uh, which is the uh, family to which uh, beta damascenone belongs to, uh, they come from carotenoids. So carotenoids are some compounds that are colored in yellow and orange. For example, just to give you an example, carrots, uh, the uh, the color of the carrots. Uh, the responsible is uh, are these compounds carotenoids. So carrots are very rich in carotenoids. Uh, without going to, into the uh, details of the uh, molecule of the beta carotene, you see that there is a lot, several uh, double bonds. And uh, this is uh, interesting from a chemical standpoint because uh, the carotenoids, thanks to the, all this uh, bunch of uh, uh, double bonds, they have a very interesting and important antioxidant uh, power. Then the carotenoids, they, they will degrade into various molecules. And but uh, today, uh, the uh, family that uh, we are interested in is in the uh, are the uh, is the uh, uh, C13 or isoprenoids. <clears throat> so some factors affecting the uh, concentration of the uh, carotenoids is very important is the uh, um, um, exposure to the sunlight. 
Okay, so as we're gonna see, they have a photoprotective role due to their um, antioxidant activity. Okay? And the level of the carotenoids, it is very much dependent, highly dependent on the uh, sun exposure. It also depends on the climatic conditions. And we can do also something in the vineyard to uh, affect, uh, impact uh, their concentration. Vintage, of course, you know, climate, uh, it is one of the major uh, parameters that affect uh, the uh, um, grapes uh, and also the uh, grapes uh, variety uh, may, can have an impact, uh, will have, a, has an impact uh, on the uh, concentration of the uh, carotenoids. As we, we see in this uh, slide, you see that uh, based on the, uh, we look at different uh, grape uh, varietals and you see that, uh, for example, the uh, uh, Chenin is the, uh, uh, in this um, study was shown uh, to be a, a, a grape uh, varietal that has quite a high concentration of the beta carotene and uh, lutein. Uh, both uh, they uh, belong to this uh, family of uh, carotenoids. <coughs> now, um, caroten carotenoids they degrade uh, uh, into the uh, norisoprenoids, okay? And norisoprenoids, uh, like uh, you know, beta damascenum, they can uh, uh, exist in two forms: uh, a free form, uh, which is directly uh, Directly um, smellable, let's say, and but also in the bound form, and uh, the um, in the bound form, they are glycosylated. So it means that they are link, uh, linked to a bound uh, to a molecule of uh, glucose, and so we need some enzymes in order to release them. And some glycosidases, for example, they are present uh, in the yeast and also in some uh, lactic bacteria. Like uh, you know, for that are uh, used for the uh, malolactic fermentation. So you know, um, beta masonin can exist in the free bound form. If it bounds, it's not volatile. We cannot smell it, but it can be released in the uh, smellable volatile form. Now the three main uh, uh, compounds that are known uh, and uh, have been studied uh, and they have an a interesting impact on the wine uh, are shown here. So the uh, beta masinon the beta ionon and the uh, TDN. So beta ionon is associated uh, uh, with a uh, aroma of uh, uh, violet and it's been identified in some syrups, okay? TDN is the classical, it is very long uh, name, uh, in short, it's called TDN. It is the um, uh, classical and, uh, uh, aroma of the uh, kerosene uh, or petrol that we found, uh, we can find in aged uh, Rieslings. But today, as I said before, we're just going to focus on uh, beta damascenon. So beta damascenon, uh, it is a very interesting molecule, as we're going to see later. It is um, associated uh, with some very fruity and ripe fruit uh, aromas, but also um, we will see that it's going to be, uh, uh, it's going to have an impact in the wines because uh, uh, it is a, a fruity enhancer. Uh, and uh, we'll see the details in a few slides. So again, uh, if you want to maximize uh, the uh, norisoprenoids and, and uh, within the same family, of course, the uh, beta damascenon, uh, we have uh, to see the peak of beta damascenon uh, between uh, uh, harvest three and four, so we are about 25, 25.5 bricks uh, in the uh, 
And so if you want to maximize uh, the uh, northern upper and uh, isoprenoids, uh, the uh, harvest is uh, suggested to be done, uh, you know, when we have uh, at this uh, BRICS level. But I have to say something. Um, this relates, uh, this study was conducted in the uh, central coast of California. So, uh, uh, as I said, the uh, climate uh, has a very important impact uh, on the ripeness. And so, maybe in your uh, wine, wine areas, uh, like in Texas, uh, this can be like a little earlier or a little later, depending on climate comparing the climate uh, to the uh, the one in the central coast uh, and also you know according to the uh, vintages you know if it's like cooler vintages and or warmer vintages anyway this is the uh, uh biosynthesis of beta damascinum it starts from neoxanthine and then uh, uh you know through all uh, different steps we get to uh, beta damascinum neoxanthine uh, belongs to the family of uh, bet, uh, uh, carotenoid, and also it is an inter intermediate of the uh, abscisic acid. Okay. Abscisic acid uh, is an acid uh, that it is usually produced uh, to protect uh, the uh, plants, not only the uh, vines, but also orchard, you know, like uh, fruit uh, trees uh, and some other plants, okay? So here, this is consistent, uh, you know, with what we found I mentioned earlier, and we're going to see again uh, that when we expose uh, the uh, uh, grapes uh, in, or the, uh, the uh, vines uh, uh, to the uh, sun, uh, neoxanthine and car carotenoids and that the massinon, they they are. Uh, biosynthesized because they uh, play a protecting role in the vines. And uh, as we can see in this study, <coughs> we see that uh, you know there was a uh, control that was um, the, um, the uh, control uh, unshaded, and then uh, the uh, treatment here was the uh, shaded and. Uh, uh, if we, uh, I think uh, this uh, uh, was applied to the, uh, I remember what was the, on the, the uh, flowers, okay? Uh, but it works also when you have already all the uh, berries on the vine. Eh? So if you uh, expose, uh, let's say, to, uh, to the um, uh, sun, eh? which is the control, uh, as compared to the uh, shaded, uh, you see an increase uh, in the concentration of uh, beta damascenon, okay? Because, uh, again, uh, beta damascenon and carotenoids and, uh, and uh, all this uh, large family of compounds with all these uh, double bonds, they play a role in protecting from, in this case, from... Uh, um, uh, sun exposure, okay? Now, the uh, beta damascenon, as I said earlier, you see on this uh, uh, table, the compound and the uh, descriptors that are associated with the uh, this uh, compound, which is cooked apple, prunes, honey, ripe fruit, okay? Uh, and uh, see the threshold here? In wine, it is usually between four in seven micrograms per liter, but uh, it can play a role uh, in some white wines because in some white wines, you see the concentration, it can be uh, above uh, the threshold, so between five and 10 uh, micrograms per liter, but usually in red wines, uh, the concentration is up to 1.5 micrograms per liter, so it usually doesn't have a direct impact uh, on the uh, red ones. But very interesting study that was published a few years ago showed uh, by a French uh, group uh, showed that uh, uh, the uh, beta-damascenon 
<coughs> was uh, was isolated from uh, red lines uh, well, the concentration was uh, as i said earlier below threshold because uh, remember that threshold is between four and seven uh, so the uh, range was between one and two micrograms per liter but what this study showed uh, was that the mass beta damascenone was able to enhance uh, the uh, fruity notes of a mix of uh, ethyl esters that are usually associated with uh, red fruit uh, aromas. Also, extremely interesting that is that they showed uh, that beta damascenone can mask the uh, aroma of uh, the uh, pyrazines, okay, the vegetable character of pyrazines. So extremely, extremely interesting. So this, the result of the study show that uh, beta damascenone has a more an indirect uh, impact on the uh, wine aroma rather than uh, a direct impact uh, because uh, we are below threshold. Now the question is, is how can we increase the concentration of beta damascenone if you want to magnify, amplify the uh, um, role of beta damascenone on its like uh, its uh, its aroma enhancer role. Uh, so in this slide, uh, you see the um, a summary of the uh, viticultural and enological practices that can affect beta damascenone. So the first one is uh, the uh, leaf removal before the raisin and increase the overall concentration of beta of C13 isotonides, including, of course, the uh, beta damascin. Okay. Well, you have to be careful here because in the uh, um, warm climates like in it is, uh, California <coughs> and also, I believe, uh, uh, Texas, uh, you, do, you cannot expose uh, the uh, 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 grapes. Uh, uh, to the um, directly to the uh, sun uh, because otherwise you can have some idea uh, what we call it the uh, sunburn okay but uh, like removing uh, some leaves uh, you know it will increase uh, the concentration of the little the mass and uh, this study also showed that the uh, the, uh, the uh, effect of the uh, trellis system and they showed that the uh, GDC the uh, Geneva double curtain was a best better uh, trellis system than the uh, uh, Scott Henry because the concentration of beta damascenone in the uh, GDC was uh, 26% higher. And then also extremely important, and we're going to see some the results of, of some trials, some experimentation uh, in the next uh, few slides, uh, that the uh, water stress uh, promotes the uh, formation of the uh, of the so this was the uh, viticultural uh, practices that we can uh, apply in order to uh, increase uh, maximize concentration of masculine, but also uh, we can do something in the uh, cellar uh, because uh, as I said before beta uh, masculine exists in some uh, um, glycosylated form, uh, so uh, which means that uh, it is bound to a uh, molecule of glucose, uh, and so uh, some uh, uh, yeasts or, or bacteria for you know we use for malolactic fermentation high in beta glycosylate glycosylase activities, they can release uh, a maximum amount of uh, beta damascenone. And also, there was a study that showed uh, the uh, uh, concentration of that mass, the mass was increased uh, by uh, cold uh, maceration. So what they did was the uh, cold uh, maceration before fermentation. And then they compared uh, the uh, pump, pumped over and the uh, uh, punched down. And uh, the, uh, they, sh they um, showed that the beta damascenone concentration uh, uh, was increased in the uh, um, cold maceration treatment in the pumped over 
but it was decreased and we are punched down. So if, if you have to choose and you want to maximize uh, that to the mass and on it, you want to choose uh, probably the uh, pump over rather the, uh, the punch down, which is probably more aggressive uh, and uh, extracts, can extract uh, some vegetal, more vegetal compounds responsible for the uh, veggie flavors in the, uh, in the wine, in the skins. I'm going to conclude with a few uh, slides. Uh, these are uh, uh, experiments that were conducted by uh, Clinton Nelson. He's a viticulturist at Backstop Vineyards in the uh, Napa Valley. Uh, so the, uh, this is the outline of the experiments conducted by uh, Clinton. Uh, I'm going to show you the results only of all the uh, first two years. Okay, And so in this uh, table, you see the uh, uh, cultural practices that were applied, uh, so namely the uh, deficit, deficit, deficit irrigation, the uh, leaf removal, the uh, fruit thinning, uh, cluster declumping and green drop at 25% raisin, green drop at 50% raisin, and uh, the uh, aggressive pruning. Okay? So you see that in the first year and second year, the uh, cultural practices that were applied uh, were not ex exactly the same. Huh? <clears throat> so what happened in the uh, first year is that focusing on beta damascenum, but uh, you have some uh, also information on, on polyphenols, you know, like tannins, for example, and also anthocyanins, which are related to, to the uh, color. But we just let let's let focus on beta damascenum. We see that. Uh, the treatment that they were applied in the first year, so the uh, deficit irrigation, the tunnel leaf removal, root thinning, etc., the green drop at uh, 50% raison, they were able to increase uh, the concentration of beta damascenon from 0 0.9 to 1.2. Remember that uh, you know the uh, uh, threshold is still uh, higher. Okay, because uh, the threshold of beta damascenum it is around four. Okay, but you know uh, below threshold beta damascenum, as I said, uh, uh, may play this role of enhancing the uh, um, fruitiness of the wine, the red fruit aroma. Okay, and then uh, the uh, crimson ridge uh, number two. So the second year, these are the results, and uh, you see that. Uh, the uh, um, viticultural practices that were applied uh, uh, that were this deficit irrigation, the uh, leaf removal, and the uh, cluster declumping and green drop at 75% uh, raison, uh, we had, uh, they had an increase of beta damascenon up to 1.7, which is quite, uh, you know, quite high. Summarizing, and we're getting close to the end of my presentation. Here is some, some beautiful pictures from Napa Valley. <coughs> uh, the key findings, a summary of uh, the uh, this uh, study. So, increase the cultural practices, generally increase aromatic. We can increase the uh, uh, aromatic potential, and uh, in the uh, Mm, uh, conditions that were applied uh, in this uh, study, beta damascenum content uh, was uh, positively influenced. Uh, not only, also because uh, in both years, uh, the also the uh, anins and the anthocyanins uh, were increased in both years. Okay? So beneficial, the uh, benefits were also applied to the uh, polyphenols in general. So color and the uh, tannins. And uh, so the key factors uh, uh, appear to be the uh, optimizing the light in the fruiting zone, and also the uh, decrease in berry sides. Okay, so if you have like small berries, usually you have a higher quality. This is a rule. And uh, the other thing that uh, came out from the uh, study is that the extending hang time in overly aggressive fruit thinning did not positively influence beta the maximum content. This was not directly shown from the results. It is just uh, an 
know, I just uh, summarized uh, a few results, uh, but this was extremely interesting because uh, in the uh, in California they tend to uh, uh, they tend to uh, harvest uh, the grapes at very high bricks, uh, twenty eight, sometimes thirty bricks, uh, because they want to minimize the uh, bell pepper and the vaginess. Uh, but uh, you see that here we have, uh, well, first uh, in this study and also in the study that I conducted at UC Davis, uh, we show that uh, the peak of pyrazine is uh, around 20 bricks. The uh, lowest point, actually, sorry, uh, the uh, pyrazine was around 20 brick, 25 bricks. Uh, so if we harvest uh, at 28 or 30, you're not going to get less pyrazines. And then... Uh, <clears throat> These studies showed also that uh, uh, harvesting this last study uh, conducted uh, in, uh, in Napa Valley showed also that uh, the uh, um, beta damascenone was negatively influenced uh, if you let hang, uh, you know, to, too long. And then uh, <coughs> the last observation was that uh, when it is uh, too warm, okay, uh, the and this you know we cannot control this because it is like uh, related to climatic conditions uh when the uh, nights are warm uh, you know close to harvest this these uh, climatic conditions can uh, dramatically influence the uh, better the maximum content anyway so i would like to conclude uh, with the uh my representation of the impact of beta damascenon of the aroma profile, and uh, this is something so funny, just uh, make you smile. Uh, it is the uh, enhancing uh, impact uh, effect of uh, beta damascenon has on the uh, uh, red uh, uh, fruit aroma of the uh, wines. And uh, I will thank you very much for your attention. I hope uh, I, uh, you enjoyed, uh, you got some uh, interesting and um, uh, applicable information to uh, uh, enhance, uh, uh, increase, uh, increase and enhance uh, the uh, quality of uh, your lines. Thank you. Thank, thank you, very you. Much. Thank you, Marco. Um, that was a great presentation. So now I'm opening up to questions. If you have any questions, please type them either in the Q&A box or the um, chat box there. So let us know your questions at this point. Um, mm. So we have a question, Marco. Uh, yeah. uh, what circumstances did you reference that caused the aroma of cooked potatoes? Okay, it was the um, IPMP. Uh, it is probably, uh, I think I said cooked potato, but it is probably more like a raw potato. IPMP, so today I talked about IBMP, isobutyl pyrazine, but uh, there's another pyrazine that has been identified. It is called IPMP, isopropyl methoxypyrazines that is related to, uh, it correlates with this uh, potatoes aroma and it is considered a uh, wine form. We usually um, see that, if I may add something here, um, it has been associated, this pyrazine, a lot with ladybug taint, um, particularly in North America. Um, and ladybug taint can happen when you have um, multicolored Asian lady beetles present in your vineyards and you bring them in and you process the grapes together with the lady beetles. And those yeah. beetles secrete um, a number of pyrazines, actually, three or four IBMP, IPMP, SBMP, and DMMP. Um, IPMP is the one that smells like potatoes or peanuts sometimes depending on the concentration and the matrix the the smell can vary yeah that's the isopropyl methoxypyrazine um, usually in grapes we have isobutyl being the dominant one um, but if if you have, see ladybug infestations you'll have the ipmp being the dominant one so if you have yeah. 
Um, if you experience such issues in your wines, maybe um, take a look at the vineyard, see if you have ladybugs in there. The multicolored a Asian lady beetles one are particularly bad, as are the seven spot. Not quite as bad, but potentially dangerous. Yeah. Sorry. Um, any other questions? Uh, I just had a comment, Marco, about the, when yeah. you, sh you showed the graphs there, um, I noticed the increase in tannins and anthocyanins. I, I know you mentioned that um, briefly. I know. I just wanted to, you know, bring attention to that because in Texas, color can be an issue and tannins can be an issue. So sometimes um, we don't have enough accumulation or we have degradation of color compounds due to the heat. So I, I thought that was something that was also interesting. Yeah, yeah definitely, because um, the uh, increase in uh, total polyphenols uh, uh, in the uh, study that was uh, presented in the last few slides uh, uh, show that uh, you can have a little more color and also a little more uh, uh, tannins. I think uh, so in those conditions, uh, uh, viticultural practices uh, um, used uh, in the experiments, uh, you can not only you can minimize uh, the uh, piercings and maximize the, aroma, the, the uh, let's say, the, the red fruit aroma, thanks to the uh, uh, increasing concentration of, uh, of beta masinum, but uh, also the other benef beneficial impact is on the uh, color and the, uh, and the uh, tannins. I agree, totally. All right, any other questions at this point? No? Okay. Well, I apologize again for the technical technical difficulties we had in the beginning. I'm glad we were able to solve them. I thank you for your patience, and thank you, Marco, <laughs> for your patience very much. Um, thank you for a wonderful presentation. Um, thank you all for being here, and we will see you all next time. Have a wonderful day. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Andrea. And just wanted to say that uh, if you have like uh, afterwards uh, questions, you can just uh, send them to uh, well, this is my email address uh, on the uh, last slide, or uh, you can just uh, send them to uh, Andrea and uh, forward it to me. So I'll be pleased to uh, respond to any questions if you have any. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.